Hi all, uh, welcome to this session on commodity derivatives and risk management and um, today we are going to discuss about uh, different uh, metal contracts traded at London Metal Exchange. So, so what are the metal and uh, what are the metal derivative contracts traded at London Metal Exchange? A wide gamut of uh, derivative contracts on different uh, base metal uh, that is your non-ferrous, ferrous, minor and precious metal trade at London Metal Exchange. As you can see from the non-ferrous category, you have copper, tin, lead, uh, zinc, aluminum, nickel, etc. trade. And from the ferrous metal category, you have steel and within the steel, you have uh, rebar, steel billets and steel scrap also uh, trade. And uh, from the uh, minor metal category, you have cobalt, uh, cobalt and molybdenum. And from the precious metal category, you have platinum and pit, uh, palladium contracts trade. Now, uh, with respect to uh, uh, you know metal and mining uh, operation, different companies operate at uh, different stages or different phases of the production and their hedging requirement are substantially different depending upon what stage of mining uh, operation or production operation they are uh, functioning. Let us do a small uh, quiz to understand uh, what are the hedging requirement of a company which or what are the hedging re requirement of companies which are operating at, a, at a different stages of copper. Uh, mining and copper extraction and copper, uh, you know, uh, copper production process. Let us focus on uh, this, uh, you know, second point. Let me ask a question to uh, you. Let us say a copper, if a company is manufacturing and selling copper concentrate and if copper price increases, will it benefit or will it lose? Uh, actually, uh, this particular company is going to benefit by increase in the copper price uh, because uh, copper concentrate uh, are nothing but a, uh, you know uh, one uh, uh, one stage ahead uh, from the copper ore, and they uh, are priced with respect to uh, you know copper, and uh, this copper concentrate normally cons uh, contains 32, uh, 20 to 30 percent of the copper. When copper ore is extracted from the copper mine, copper ores are treated and refined, and the refined product is known as the copper concentrate. So, when copper price increases, a company which is manuf uh, which is uh, mining copper ore and manufacturing copper concentrate will benefit from this price increase. Now, let us go to the second uh, uh, company. Let us say a company which uses copper cathode to manufacture and sell copper tubes. What would be its profit or uh, loss if the copper price increase increases? Will it gain or will it lose? The answer is this particular company is going to lose uh, if the copper price increases because it will be buying copper at a higher rate and if it is not able to commensurately pass on this profit, uh, uh, commensurately pass on this price increase to customer, its profit is going to take a hit. So, when copper price increases, a copper cathode uh, you know buyer and a copper tube manufacturing company will incur loss. Now, let us go to a third kind of a company. Let us say a company which is involved only in smelting and uh, refining of uh, copper, uh, what would be its profit or loss if copper price increases? In fact, the answer will be neither, because this kind of a company only uh, get uh, treatment charges and refining charges, which is known as TCRC charges in the copper industry. They earn poor tonnage of copper, uh, they uh, you know treat, uh, they treat and refine. So, irrespective of uh, whatever may be the copper price, they, um, their uh, profit uh, does not increase or does not go down with the movement of the copper prices. 
So, uh, what we are uh, you know leading out of what we are discussing is that depending upon what kind of a value chain uh, or what kind of production process or which phase of production process a company is operating, the price increase or decrease is going to affect that those companies in a different manner. So, hedging requirement of this company uh, operating at different stages of the production cycle will vary with the change in the copper prices. Now, let us go to little bit of discussion on London Metal Exchange. It is one of the oldest exchange. It started uh, formally in 1877 and this is one of the oldest exchange. Still, uh, it continues uh, its operation and it is one of the largest exchange uh, with respect to uh, all uh, metals uh, we discussed uh, a couple of minutes back. Now, just you know, uh, I will just take you through how this particular exchange has emerged since I hope you are able to see this. Say this uh, introduction of copper and tin uh, contract futures and option contract on tin started in the year 1877, and different other contracts have been introduced in different year. I am not going into this detail. And uh, another interesting aspect is that London was uh, uh, that is London Metal Exchange was acquired by Hong Kong Exchange in 2012. So this is little bit about history of London Metal Exchange. And uh, this London Metal Exchange almost came to a closure with the uh, 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 International Teen Council uh, uh, failure. Basically, uh, this failure uh, was so severe that uh, you know the whole future of London Metal Exchange came to a, uh, came to a standstill. And at that point of time, in fact, till 1985, this London Metal Exchange did not have a clearing house. If you recall, in some of the earlier session, we discussed the role of clearing house in a commodity exchange or commodity derivative exchange. Clearing house uh, provide a very important function, which is known as your novation. In a no, in novation, the clearing house takes the counterparty to each and every trade and guarantees each and every trade which gets executed in the exchange platform. So, if a counterparty defaults, the settlement guarantee fund of the exchange is supposed to, uh, you know, uh, take care of this counterparty default so that the uh, one side of the even if one side of the counterparty uh, one counterparty defaults the other side is not negatively affected however till 1985 london metal exchange did not have a uh, uh, you know this clearing house associated with it post 1985 this international teen council the uh, you know london metal exchange created a uh, created a clearing house now, uh, the, his, the importance of London Metal Exchange uh, can be judged from the fact that LME prices are used as reference price for spot transactions by almost all metal producing companies in the world. So, if a company is buying and selling uh, copper or aluminum or steel or tin or zinc, uh, any metal they are buying and selling they price their, their output or when they are you know buying they price their input uh, with respect to LME price. And uh, uh, London market uh, exchange uh, sorry London metal exchange is also known as a market of last resort as traders can take and give physical delivery of the metal. Also another interesting aspect of this London metal exchange which is not uh, you know, which is not applicable to other commodity derivative exchange. Commodity derivative exchange normally do not provide spot trading facility. So, uh, however, in case of a London Metal Exchange, London Metal Exchange also has a facility for spot trading. So, uh, producers of metal, consumers, buyers, sellers of metal can go to the LME platform and take delivery of the underlying metal or uh, give delivery of the underlying metal. So, 
this market that is why London Metal Exchange is also known as a market of last resort for all kinds of metal producers and metal consumers and traders. In fact, to facilitate the spot trading, there are around 600 warehouses which are registered with LME. So, there are uh, you know all over world at different uh, places, there are LME registered warehouses which uh, in you know from uh, these warehouses buyers can buy uh, LME, uh, uh, LME approved uh, metal uh, you know contracts as well as uh, they can uh, deliver uh, the uh, metal which uh, if a seller intends to sell. Uh, I hope you are able to see this particular excel file, let me just uh, increase the font size. So, if you see this one, this particular excel size shows the different uh, warehouse location which are approved by London Metal Exchange, you have in the country, these are your different commodity warehouses and in Germany, you have Italy, you have Japan, you have South Korea, you have Malaysia, you have Netherlands, you have Singapore, Spain, Sweden, Taiwan and so on and so forth. So, I am not going into this detail and also another interesting aspect is that this uh, LME also informs us, if you see this one, this is the, this column shows the rates per ton per US. Uh, this is your rate per ton per US dollar uh, per day in US cents. So, if a particular um, buyer or if a particular uh, trader wants to store aluminum for aluminum alloy for one day and for one ton, it, this particular company has to pay 56 cents as uh, warehouse charges. And besides, uh, you know, uh, besides making ab availability uh, of this warehouse information in, uh, with respect to the uh, rental charge by the warehouse, LME also on a daily basis uh, in informs all, uh, you know, all traders or all participants what is the total availability of a particular commodity at each of these warehouse. So, this is a very important information with respect to you know inventory label and uh, based on this inventory label buyers and say, uh, sellers will be able to know what is the supply demand pattern for a particular commodity at a given point of time. Let us say uh, like this is uh, you know just a, a typical example uh, for daily warehouse detail for copper. So, X LME will inform where air warehouse A in Spain what is the opening stock on given day, how many what is the stock in, what is the stock out what that is the what is the change in the stock change, uh, stock change and what is the ending balance like uh, let us say in the warehouse B. So, you have uh, 10,125 tons of um, uh, copper was there, stock in is 500, stock out is 700, net change is minus 200 and this is the ending balance. So, with this kind of information, when this kind, uh, when this kind of information is uh, made available to uh, all participants, uh, they come to know what is the supply demand uh, for a particular commodity, metal commodity, at a given point of time, and it makes them help. Uh, it takes, it helps them in taking pricing decision. Now let's go to understand little bit on trading system at LME. So. This is one of the oldest uh, commodity exchange as I mentioned and uh, it operates three types of trading platform. Uh, one is the, the ring, it is open outcry method of uh, trading happens. I am sure some of the old videos you must have seen where people used to congregate and make some hand, hand gestures etc. to buy and sell. So, the ring open outcry system of LME still uh, undertakes those kind of a buying selling, uh, you know the traders or trading members go to the exchange ring and uh, physically uh, interact with each other to undertake uh, tradings. We will go and uh, you know next couple of minutes we will discuss little bit more about this ring trading system because this is very unique to LME and no other commodity exchange in the world has uh, is offering this kind of a trading system as of today. 
all exchanges have graduated to electronic order matching that is buyers and sellers sitting at different corners of the world uh, are able to place their order and order matching is done through electronically. Besides the ring, uh, LME also offers uh, electronic trading platform which is known as LME Select and it also offers trading uh, you know trading uh, system through uh, telephone system which is known as a uh, inter office trading system through telephone and this operates 24 hours a day now let's go to little bit of more on the ring now this is If you can see, this is the London Metal Exchange unveils new ring. If it is, I am sure you are able to see this. This is uh, this particular report has been downloaded from the LME website. This is as late as 18 February 2016. This picture shows, uh, 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 you know, this is the ring. If you can see, this is the circular. Uh, this red leather chairs are the ring. And if you can see, there are some people who are sitting with, uh, you know, uh, papers in their hand, and these are the trading members. Basically, in stock exchange parlance, uh, these are your brokers. So these uh, trading members or brokers collate the buy and sell orders and take it to the exchange, and uh, they physically interact and uh, arrive at different arrive at the prices uh, at which orders are matched. So more about the ring trading and how order execution happens. This is available at the LME website. You can, you know, this particular document uh, which is freely downloadable. You can download and read it. And uh, as you can see, uh, this is the rate fund. Uh, the uh, ring has provided a transparent and robust price discovery process for the global metal industry for 139 years. So, this is uh, our latest report which was published by <coughs> the London Metal Exchange. And uh, it is also another quote on quote from the LME website. Uh, this is the ring, uh, uh, our the ring, our open outcry trading floor is central to the process of price discovery. Now, how exactly the ring trading happens? Uh, who throughout the day there is a you know like in uh, uh, in India you have BSE NSE starting from nine o'clock onwards and trading is going till uh, three forty five. Similarly, the ring also has a some uh, opening time and the closing time, and this total uh, trading time is divided into four ring session. And in each ring session, each metal is earmarked for five minutes. And uh, buyer, sellers, or the trading members, uh, uh, you know, buy interact with each other to buy and sell for a sell that commodity during that five minutes. And there is also a specific uh, time uh, earmarked, which is called a curve trading. And in this curve trading, all metals are traded simultaneously. So any buyer or any seller or any trader has to buy or sell something. During that curve trading time, they can buy and sell each and every commodity. Now, let us go to, I hope this is visible to you. If you can see, this is your uh, ring uh, trading starts at 11 a.m. to uh, 5 p.m., 11.40 a.m. to 5 p.m. in London time. and. If you can see, <coughs> if you can focus on this particular screen now, if you see this one, this is the first session. First session, the steel billets trade from 11.40 to 11.45, aluminum allowed trades from 11.45 to 11.50, so on and so forth. And if you have, like you have uh, by, if you see, the first uh, ring, first ring trade ends by 12.25. And there is an interval from 12.25 to 12.30. And the second ring starts from, again, copper start, get, uh, start getting traded from 12.30 to 12.35. I want all of you to focus this particular time, copper in the second ring tra trades from 12 to 12.35. In the first ring, uh, copper traded at 12, uh, 12 to 12.5 uh, noon. 
and in the second ring copper traded from 1230 uh, to 1235 and at the end of the ring session 2 you have a curb trading please note that one curb trading is for uh, 20, 20 minutes that is your 1325 to 1445 minutes. Similarly, you have afternoon session is again uh, divided into two ring sessions. So, you have aluminum alloy and uh, uh, other commodities like lead zinc etcetera is trading and again you have an interval of uh, between th uh, 1535 that is 335 to 340 and uh, again there is a curve trading at the end of the fourth ring that is from 415 to 5 pm. So, 415 to so almost 45 minutes you have uh, you are marked for curve trading and uh, this is so uh, this is all about uh, the ring trading uh, session at LME. And uh, uh, at the end of uh, each of these ring trading session, uh, the LME informs what is the price and these prices are known as you know LME informs three sets of price on a daily basis that is official price, unofficial price and closing price. So, uh, let me take you through how does this official price look like. Please see this one if you can see uh, this particular table. This is the official price for official price as announced by LME as on 1st July 2016. So, you have aluminum official price is this aluminum, aluminum alloy, copper etcetera are these are the official price. Besides this official price, LME also uh, provides something called a unofficial price and closing price. So, what are these unofficial price and closing price? So, um, official price arrived is arrived at the uh, you know at the end of the second ring session. So, if you recall copper was trading around uh, 1230 to 1235. So, the office the price arrived at during this session uh, for copper will be known as the official price. In fact, it is the last offer price for the cash and spot position. See during this 5 minutes buyers and sellers not only trade futures and options, they also trade uh, trade spot position. So, the last uh, you know offer price all of you know that uh, whenever buyers are uh, bidding they give a buy price and whenever sellers are giving uh, uh, their interest the price interest that is known as your offer price or ask price. So, uh, the last offer price for the spot trading for the copper uh, at the second ring session is known as the official price. Similarly, what is the unofficial price? Unofficial price is the you know offer price for the spot trading which uh, for a commodity during the fourth ring session. So, uh, in the afternoon in the uh, second session that is the fourth ring session what is the offer price? Uh, last offer price uh, um, came from a seller uh, you know before uh, that 5 minute during that 5 minute slot. So, that will be known as your unofficial price. And what is the closing price? Closing price is arrived during the uh, second curve trading session. So, let me take you to the Okay, um, if you uh, if you remember, uh, this is the uh, the curve trading starts from uh, that is uh, four fifteen to it ends up at five o'clock, and uh, during the curve trading, aluminum and uh, aluminum uh, suggests trading at four thirty, uh, tin suggests trading at four thirty five. So, the uh, last offer price for the spot trading which uh, was uh, you know which came during this period of time that is uh, before 1635 that becomes a spot price for 
that becomes the spot price for uh, uh, L teen contract. Uh, that is the closing price for the teen contract that day. Let me summarize what I just mentioned. So, let me summarize what I just mentioned. LME publishes uh, on offi official price, unofficial price, and closing price. And why so many prices are informed by the or uh, you know made available by the LME, not the last price only. Okay, the answer to this particular question is that LME price is used to uh, price the spot trading or spot transactions by many companies all over the world. So, depending upon uh, you know, uh, depending upon what is their working hour and what is the working time for those companies. Uh, so, uh, LME makes available three different prices. So, depending upon uh, whichever price is uh, suitable, a company uses that price as a reference price for its spot, uh, you know, transactions, buying and selling commodity in physical market. As I mentioned, you have, if you see, official price discovery mechanism at LME. Copper trades at, uh, you know, copper trades at 12:30. Copper closes at uh, ring closes for uh, for copper ring closes at 12:35. Official price, which is a provisional official price, gets announced by the quotation committee. LME has a quotation committee which announces provisional offer price and that offer price is made available to all trading member and in case there is a discrepancy they get in touch with the quotation committee and the once the discrepancy is resolved official price gets if you can see this official price gets announced to the market whole world by 1245 so whole uh, 12 40 by 1245 uh, pm uh, all uh, you know the exchange officially informs what is the uh, copper uh, price for uh, the second ring session. Also, um, besides this official unofficial price, LME also informs or publishes uh, LME Asian benchmark price. So, what is this LME benchmark price? Asian benchmark price is that uh, it is the weighted uh, average, volume weighted average price of transactions in the LME select that is your electronic market. As you recall, uh, LME offers three different kinds of trading system, ring trading as well as LME uh, trading which is your electronic platform. So, volume weighted uh, average price is calculated and that is informed to the uh, in the general market uh, and uh, uh, the old trades which have been executed by uh, during 655 to 7 uh, uh, 7 pm uh, green, uh, gmt during that period of time uh, whatever trades has been executed that volume weighted average price is informed to the market uh, as a, a asian reference price and these prices uh, which are discovered and published uh, coincide uh, with the end of the Asian trading day. So, uh, subsequently if any company wants to price uh, the, its product buy for buying and selling, they can use this a LME Asian benchmark price to price their products. Now, uh, commodity contracts at LME, as I mentioned, uh, you know, any exchange has uh, definitely futures options contract. You also have uh, at LME, you also have companies can buy and sell uh, physical commodities. So, this cash trading at LME is uh, can be done and it is done through T plus 2 settlement that is trading day and uh, buyers and sellers will be. Uh, buyers will be giving uh, money and sellers will be giving warehouse receipts uh, to the LME within T, uh, T plus 2 date and for the spot transaction and uh, in uh, LME parlance the warehouse receipts are known as warrants. All along we were using the word warehouse receipts, but uh, at LME these warehouse receipts are known as warrants and uh, these warrants are reco gets recorded uh, or gets transacted from the seller's account to the buyer's account uh, in a you know demat uh, in a demat account and that demat account is known as lme sold 
So, how these words have come, I am not very clear, but this uh, DMAT account is known as uh, LME sword and the warehouse receipts are known as your warrants. And derivative contracts, uh, which derivative contracts trade at LME, there are quite a few derivative contracts trade at uh, LME, L, uh, futures options and traded average price swap options and swaps, etc. So, we will be uh, continuing with uh, discussion on these contracts in our uh, next session. So, thank you all of you and uh, again looking forward to the next session which is going to be the last session for uh, this particular uh, subject.